Hello everyone! This is a short tour of Cambridge City Center during the coronavirus outbreak in 2020. I thought I'd show you what the city looks like during the lockdown, how empty it is, how quiet, and how beautiful. And I'll share some of Cambridge's plague history because this town is steeped in plague history. So, um, right, so to start off the tour, right now we're walking through Little St. Mary's Lane, which is a tiny medieval street between the River Cam and Trumpington Road, which many of you may know is one of the two main streets in the city. So just to show you this on a map, so this is Little St. Mary's Lane that leads from the River Cam up to Trumpington Street. And um, here it is in relation to the city, so it's just in the south corner of the core city, right? So on our walk, we will take um, a left onto Trumping Street and follow the road past St. Catherine's College and Corpus Christi College and up to the Corpus Clock. And that's where the street changes names to King's Parade. And we'll pass all of the closed shops in King's College and the chapel, um, right up to Great St. Mary's Church, which is the official center of the city. So essentially this walk is from Little St. Mary's Church to Big St. Mary's Church. So back to our walk in Little St. Mary's Lane, we're walking away from the River Cam. Most of these houses date from the 17th to the 19th century. Families who ran barges on the river lived here first, but by the Victorian period, it was mostly houses of college servants. And that's the back gate to Peterhouse College, um, completely closed for the pandemic. And that pretty building is the college library, which used to be the old classical archeology span museum. This lane used to be known as a red light district in the Victorian era. The, um, the black fronted building on the left side was called the Half Moon Inn, and it was a public house with a really bad reputation. And now it's just a, a pleasant residential passage. And you can see the gravestones of Little St. Mary's Church, really peaceful and quiet. Obviously no one's out today during the pandemic. You know, there's been a place of worship on this site since the Anglo-Saxon period, and a Fun fact, in the, uh, the 1200s, this site was owned by the Hospital of St. John the Evangelist. And when students ran away from Oxford in the 1200s, some of them lived here, but they couldn't get along with the sick people. And so the Bishop of Ely moved the students out to a site right next door, and that's the origin of Peter House, the oldest Cambridge college. And speaking of sick people, notice we haven't seen anybody. It's so quiet in the lockdown. Usually um, there are people on this lane, but the rules are you stay at home at all times except for essential chores and you can leave home once a day for exercise, but only with members of your own household. And um, that's what I'm doing here, walking through the city for my once a day exercise. And we're, um, we're coming up to Trumpington Street. Right ahead is Pembroke College, the third oldest college. Um, it's one of the so-called Cambridge Plague Colleges. It was founded right around the Black Death of 1348. And um, it, was, it was part of a, a movement to help deal with the shortages of learned men, as they were called, in the aftermath of the plague. And there's a view down Trumpington Road. There are literally pigeons hanging out in empty streets. And we're following Pembroke College and looking down Trumpington Street now to the north, passing Emmanuel United Reformed Church to the left. And wow, if you look to the right, you'll see our first people. Um, they're out cycling for their once a day exercise. It's a really beautiful April Saturday. And normally these streets would be bustling with locals and tourists heading for the market, doing a bit of shopping and sightseeing. And it's almost spooky how quiet it is right now. And that's Cambridge University Estate Management, completely shuttered. And if you're wondering, if you look down at the street right about now, those big gutters by the street are the um, historic fresh water supply to the city, made by Thomas Hobson around 1610, the same guy famous for the phrase, Hobson's Choice. Um, that was part of a movement to clean up the city uh, in a sanitation public works pro project. Just looking down Pembroke Street, also known as Downing Street, every street in medieval Cambridge has like three names, is like here on the other side of the street is Mill Lane, um, same street, leads down to the River Cam and gets its name from an old mill that used to be on the river. So old it was listed in the William the Conqueror's Doomsday Book. 
and that's Fitzbilly's, a Cambridge institution, best scones in the city by far, famous for its um, sticky Chelsea buns. It's usually bursting with people, but not today. Nobody's out, everyone's being really good with lockdown. Again, the idea is you only go out once a day for exercise, walking, jogging, cycling, And um, just to the right, you'll see a beautiful magnolia tree by St. Boltoff's Church. Not many people out to admire spring this year. And um, over here is the old Cambridge University Press, officially named the Pitt Building. Um, it housed the press for a century, and now I think it's um, a conference center. Completely shut. And um, medieval streets, so empty. Cambridge um, has been through at least four major plague events, and it saw outbreaks of polio and smallpox. It saw the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic. That building with the green front is um, Eden Ravenscroft, where you can buy your academic gown. Dates to 1629. And now we're looking up Silver Street down to Queen's College. And to the right is St. Boltoff's Church, which dates to the 14th century. So it pretty much saw all of these epidemics in Cambridge. And as we walk down to the left is St. Catherine's College. It's going to be the red brick one that you'll see a few times. And to the right is Corpus Christi College. The big bubonic plague that hit Cambridge was in 1348 and 49. And that was the one that killed off about a third of the city's population. At that time, there were two Cambridge religious guilds, Corpus Christi and the Blessed Virgin Mary, and they existed just to hire priests to pray for their members. So essentially, if you paid and joined that guild, you got someone to pray for your soul forever. That was the idea anyway. But they lost a lot of priests to the plague. So after that plague decimated Cambridge, the two guilds united to found a Corpus Christi college right here on the right, so that um, they could you know, train more young clerks to help replace all of the clergy who died of the plague. So Corpus Christi is one of the big plague colleges. In many ways, Cambridge is a city that's been really shaped by these epidemics. Medieval Cambridge was just a health nightmare. Most of these roads were unpaved and people just threw refuse into the streets, let it accumulate. Ditches were full of filth. Cows, pigs, horses, they were all brought right into town. Um, it wasn't really cleaned up until the 17th century, and even then, it was a bit hit and miss. One of my favorite things is, in these plague years, Cambridge had people called searchers, and they were sent through the town to investigate cases of suspected plague, you know, living or dead cases. Um, and these searchers were usually old women who had recovered from the plague themselves and had some kind of immunity. And they carried these long white wands, um, kind of like a badge of office, and they would report their findings to the parish clerks. So if the searcher said, yep, yep, that's a case of plague, um, the house would be isolated, or the sick people inside might be removed to pest houses that were set up on Midsummer Commons. It was kind of like medieval isolation wards. Um, parishes recorded these cases of plagues in books called Bills of Mortality, and I love that fact. So just like today, they were searching for cases, tracing them and isolating them. They'd look at the numbers in the books and see whether they were increasing so they could warn people and give them time to flee to the countryside, just like medieval flattened a curve. And famously, Isaac, Isaac Newton fled the city like this during the plagues of 1665 and 67, and that's where he invented calculus. And right here to the right is the Corpus Clock. It was opened by Stephen Hawking in 2008. And the creature at the top is called a chronophage, Latin for time eater. It's supposed to be terrifying, and he's a reminder that he's eating up every minute of your life and salivating for the next. I think it maybe hits a bit too close to home during the coronavirus. And this is at St. Bennett's Lane. Um, you can just see the red sign for the eagle. It's probably the most famous pub in Cambridge, lots of history, medieval, World War II, probably best known for where Watson and Crick went right after they discovered DNA and allegedly walked in and shouted, we've discovered the secret of life. And the church on the right is the oldest standing building in the city. That tower is Anglo-Saxon, really old. And again, it saw all of these 
plague outbreaks and epidemics um, all through history. And there's the Corpus clock again, right there in the building there's King's College. And we're just turning on to King's Parade. And as you can see, not many people out. This is the heart of the city. It's usually flooded with people. Some weekends you can barely walk without squeezing through wall-to-wall -wall tourists. I've never seen it this quiet. It's completely um, shut. And um, here's the Copper Kettle, another Cambridge institution. Great view of Kings. Scenes from the murder mystery TV show Grantchester were filmed there. And King's College, founded by Henry VI in 1441. That pretty gate um, is actually Victorian. Uh, the college knocked down a whole row of houses and shops to build that, that gate. And it's, it's very pretty with neo-gothic architecture. It's very sympathetic with the chapel on the end, which is real medieval. The white building in the distance is the Cine House. If you graduate from the University of Cambridge, that's the building you're in for the ceremony when you get your degree. And the stone building next to it with the tower um, is Gonville and Keys College, which was Stephen Hawking's college when he was alive. And just here to the left is King's College Chapel again, in the sunshine, no one out to see it. And uh, this is St. Edward's Passage. There's a, a church in there that was the hotbed of the Protestant Reformation in Cambridge, actually. And there goes two police officers, making sure everyone's paying attention to the social distancing rules. King's College Chapel is um, the most famous building in town. It kind of represents the city. You'll see it on all the postcards. Henry VI actually wanted to lay the foundation stone of the chapel himself in the mid-1400s, but um, an outbreak of the plague in Cambridge prevented him from coming to the city at the time. So he sent his cousin instead. You know, great family relationship there. And finally, um, the tower on the right is Great St. Mary's Church. That church is the official center of Cambridge. Richard III, the same one who was found under the car park recently, he gave 20 pounds to rebuild the church. It was worth a few thousand pounds um, in today's money. His uh, cousin Henry killed him and then donated more money uh, to the church for an ornate roof uh, that you can still see today. And in 1616, King James of the famous King James Bible was afraid of the Puritan um, feelings rising up in Cambridge, so he ordered all students to attend sermons at the Great St. Mary's Church twice a day, unless there was a plague. So another touch of plague in Cambridge history. So there we go. That's our short walk through Cambridge during the coronavirus epidemic. All kinds of pandemic history wrapped up in the city and it's so fascinating. Right now we're living through another part of that story.